Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? You guys, it's Thursday night. Welcome. You guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Facebook page and the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. My name is Brandy. Um, I am the owner and artisan behind Brush by Brandy. Brush by Brandy. Oh, my pop socket. Pop socket's in the way. Sorry socket. about that. You gotta have a pop Hand socket, model. right? Um, and I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern, so we are going to do a project tonight. So, um, the mm -hmm. products that I'm going to be using, you guys, are part of the brand new release from Dixie Bell. So, um, if you guys have been paying attention, just this last Wednesday online now, you can order the new Dixie Bell stencils. So, let me show you guys the stencils we're going to use. So, I'm leaning towards this one. This is one of the new stencils. This is called Royal Damask. The mask, damask. Damn, that's another one of those words everyone says differently. I'm always super aware when I look at these damask patterns of faces in a, so, so what I think is if you see a face in a, in a damask, you just have to turn it upside down or right side up. So I'll have to look at this one and make sure I don't see any faces. I'm hypersensitive to faces <laughs> in those patterns. Like if somebody's looking just at me, like, at you. whoa. Okay. The other one is Hound's Tooth which I love this houndstooth. I don't think we're gonna use this one tonight because I don't think the style of it's right for my piece. This feels more, a little more masculine, more clean lined, um, more classic, and I wanna go for something a little more ornate than this, but I love this houndstooth. Uh, yes, you in the back. <laughs> uh, how did it get its name? Who put it? Royal Houndstooth? Hounds? I think it, uh, uh, smile? I'm, I'm just, Some smile? Uh -huh. yeah, there we go. <laughs> Oh. And then this one's the Moroccan stencil, and I really love this one too. So I'm kind of torn whether I should use this one or the the damask one, since we know that the hound's tooth is out. Well, it's not. Oh, it's still in. It's still yeah. very much in. Yeah, but you need to have that taken out. <laughs> so those are my two choices, and these are currently available online. You guys, if you guys go to the link that I put above in the post, um, these are available, and I like these because they're a nice size, but they're they're large, but they're not too large. A lot of wall stencils come in a really large size that can actually be kind of inconvenient to work with. This is a good furniture size, and that's what we use them mostly on. And then, of course, you guys know that the new loose um, came out online this week too, and that's available in a gold, copper, uh, red, which is garnet, and then a silver four colors of the metallic mousse. And I've been posting projects on that this week. So if you guys go to my Facebook or my Instagram feed, you'll see projects using the mousse too. I'm just going to put these up here for now. You ever see that movie, Damask? <laughs> yeah, huh? So classic. Okay, so this is a little piece that we're going to work on tonight. And I'm going to show you guys how I'm getting to where I'm going. Um, and... If you guys follow, you know, Thursday or Saturday evening, I'm supposed to go live with Aaron from Bowtie Treasures. Um, and this is the piece I'm going to work on. So we're going to get it ready tonight. And then if you guys come back on Saturday, you'll see the next step in it too. So that's going to be kind of cool. So this is my original finish right here. And it's kind of this gross. I think it was, I think it probably used to be white a few decades ago. And it's just, I'm gonna call this yellowing, but it's more of like a puce green color um, that it's turned into. So what I started out with is this has all been cleaned really well with Dixie Belle White Lightning, but it's a really slick surface. There is real wood under here. This is just the finish on it. Um, it's just got this really slick coating on it. So I'm gonna start out with, do you guys have a guess? Anyone, anyone? Would you use Boss or would you use Slick Stick here? So then the answer is kind of in the name and Slick Stick is the product you want to use. So Slick Stick is a Dixie Belle gripping primer. So it says it bonds to glossy and other hard shiny surfaces to allow effective painting. It essentially gives the paint something to bite onto. So this is Slick Stick. Slick Stick comes in white and I've done half my piece here, but we're going to go ahead and apply the Slick Stick to the other half too. Slick Stick goes on really nicely. It's going to go on just like the paint does. So I use a damp brush to start with, and then um, I, you'll notice I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini, my good brushes, because this washes out of brushes really nicely. Um, it's a water-based product, has minimal odor, so it's not noxious like some uh, primers can be. And it just goes on just like a paint. So because this is going to be the base for my paint finish, um, 
I make sure that I get a nice even coat, no brush strokes, no drips. I'm paying attention to all that even as I'm putting on my primer coat because everything I build up here is going to show through. Get this line. So I just use long, even strokes. Um, I'm not using any water with this. It just goes on really easy, easily. It's a nice formula. Just refill my brush as needed. And then this is going to give me a little bit of tooth to this finish. So whereas my paint might have a hard time sticking to the smooth, glossy finish that was on here before, I can just clean it, add my slick stick, um, and then go ahead and, and add my paint over the top of this. And we're going to add something in between the paint too. We're going to do some raised stenciling tonight. I'm going to use raised stenciling because I always feel like when I have pieces that have frames like this, they're meant to frame something, right? It's a frame. So I like to frame something in there. In this case, I'm going to frame a raised stencil. So I'm going to give this piece texture and interest. It's cute, um, but it's it's missing something. Can you just not paint what it's on? Because it's kind of a family area. Oh, yeah, your uh, furniture dolly. Yeah, it goes way back. <laughs> way back to when I started painting furniture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get this last one over here. And then I just check and make sure I don't have any drips or anything. Um, slick stick is really, it's similar to the, to the consistency of the paint, of Dixie Bell paint and how it goes on. Um, and this you would use for painting on really any non-porous surface. So glass, plastic, laminate. If you're doing your kitchen cabinets and they're laminate, they have a coating on them that's not real wood um, or is, is really slick. This is what you would use to paint that. A lot of people have done their countertops. Uh, when you have old laminate countertops and you can't replace them just yet, you can paint them, but you need to put a coat of slick stick on first. Two coats are recommended. So um, I do have two coats on this side as well. Oh. Thanks, Wendy. What what Sean mess up tonight, guys? Hey, easy killer. You can tell me. <laughs> you can tell me. You won't know. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's anonymity on Facebook. Can you right? tint? The slick stick? You can. Would you want to? You you don't want to alter it too much because you don't want to alter the uh, makeup of the product, but you can tint it. Now, tinting just means a drop or two of paint. It takes very little paint to tint something. Um, so I don't have a problem with just tinting it. I do have a problem if you want to make it black, like, nope, you're going to alter the makeup of the product. It's going to be more paint than it is slick stick. So I wouldn't do more than a drop or two. Um, you do not want to alter the makeup of that product. So if you feel like you're having to tint it that much, but usually when you're tinting a primer, if you go to the hardware store and they tint a primer for you, they're not tinting it to the shade that your paint is going to be. They're just going to get it to a shade closer for you. So, um, you know, if you're painting black or red, you get a gray primer. It's not dark gray. It's usually a fairly Please tell light me you're going to turn that piece through. Now, oh, oh, did let's just, talk Let's talk hinges. Did I just move it? I'm a hinge painter and I own it. Okay. Um, I don't have a problem with painting hinges. Now, um, I've got slick stick on here. It's going to bond to these hinges pretty well. But there's a couple choices with hinges. You can, number one, you can tape them off. Um, these are not the type of hinges that rub each other. So if you'll notice, they've got a little gap in between the moving parts. But you can tape them off. There are There's liquid latex products that you can use to paint it on and then you just peel that away when you're done. I don't like those a lot for hinges. They tend to get kind of gummed up in the works of the hinges a little bit, but they are an option. Um, so are you saying those hinges kind of need a dental plan? They kind of have a hounds tooth, <laughs> a little bit of hounds tooth, <laughs> right there in the front. <laughs> no, I'm in the back. <laughs> um, um, another thing you can do is you can, you can paint them and then come back and remove your paint too. So, um, if you, I wouldn't use a primer if you're going to do that. Cause if you're trying to take it off, the primer is meant to make the grip all that much stronger. So I wouldn't put a primer. And then if you plan to remove it, you can also paint it and then just come back and hit it with some gilding wax. And then it's going to look like a metal. So there's a tons of ways you can um, handle hinges. But I paint my hinges for the most part. There's there's some if I feel like they're a feature of the piece, I will avoid painting them. Does that make sense? Otherwise, I make them go away. That's how I feel about hinges. Okay, so what we are going to do, I want to use these frames and I want to add some raised stenciling. So when I look for what pattern I want to raise stencil with, I look at the size of my stencil, okay? Because I want it to be appropriate 
to um, you know, the size of these openings here. So I'm looking at this, how would this pattern lay out? It fits nicely in between my frame, in between the edges of my frame. It gives me a lot of detail. So in comparison, let's hold up, hold up the hounds too. You know what, okay, I'm taking this. We're going fully mobile over yeah. here. Yeah, all right. Nobody said uh, anything, but I, I feel bad. YouTube's frustrating that... because it automatically puts like a fisheye lens on the camera and it gets really frustrating. Here, so let's get on in there. Got this one right here. I don't know whoa, if, whoa, hey. I don't know if yeah. you noticed this, but. Here, do you want me to be the camera person? Oh come paint, come yeah. paint. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Nobody wants that. So I would get, I don't know, one and a half rows of the hound's tooth and then it kind of cuts off. It's a little large in scale for this space that I want to put it in. And then... If I look at this one here, I'd probably center it. It does center really nicely. I like that too. That gets a lot of nice detail, fits nice down that center row right there. So I could go either here or here. I'm kind of torn, but now that I've held this up, I'm kind of leaning towards this one. I like how it fills the space a little better. Let's go ahead and open this. This one's called Moroccan. So I usually will hold my stencil up and just see what does the spacing look like. I'm going to roll in front of you and grab some. Um, oh my gosh, you're so rude. Look at my. Oh my gosh. My stool's on my wheels. Oh. Huh? My wheels need to be greased up a little bit. Okay. And then I can kind of play with placement on here for where I want it. So I feel like this stencil has a definite center, which is this. It does repeat but I want to get an even line. So I'm going to use this center line right here. And that's going to be what I stencil right down the center of my, my design. So I will center that. Okay. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a little bit of spray adhesive. Well, something happened on YouTube. Oh, again? Yeah. You guys stop pushing buttons. I didn't touch a button. It's on. It's on. I don't know. Ooh. You're going to have to figure this out. Okay. All right, all right. Sorry, guys. It's still alive, though. Okay, so I use uh, 3M Super 77 spray adhesive from the hardware store. This is a item from, where do I get this, Lowe's or Home Depot? Um, I've used it before, so I make sure that the nozzle's nice and clear every time I use it. I'm just picking away with my fingernail because it gums up on the tip with the adhesive. And then it'll start spraying. You won't have control over it. You already don't have a lot of control over it, but that gives you even less. And then I'm going to focus it right down the center of my stencil here, and I'm going to point it away from my piece because I don't want to get overspray onto my piece. And I'm just going to spray my stencil spray adhesive gets tacky really fast so that's why it's good for this application and then I'm going to work and make sure I get a center right about there and then I'm just going to press that spray adhesive you do need to work a little bit quickly it doesn't stay tacky for that long it starts setting up and then it won't it won't tack anymore all right and that gave me a nice application now one part of my raised stencil that's going to be a challenge is along these ridges here. I'm going to have to use my fingers and press my stencil down as I'm going. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of painter's tape to also hold this in place. And that's because it holds a little bit better than the spray adhesive. And if my adhesive loosens up, let me try not to take the other way, then I know my stencil is not going to fall off the front of my piece. All right. So just that little bit of adhesive is all you need. Um, it doesn't transfer to your piece unless you use too much spray adhesive. And then I've uh, done videos on how I clean my stencils, but I just use um, every once in a while, every few applications, I'll go through and clean them with a citrus strip, which is just a light, moderate stripper. That's just what I do. Okay, now I'm going to open Dixie Mud. Dixie Mud is cool. It comes in three colors. It comes in black, white, and brown. I'm just going to use white here. I intend to paint this. I could use brown or black. It wouldn't really matter because I'm going to paint it. But I like that the white is the most similar to my background. It'll cover 
my paint with my paint evenly. It's not going to show anyways. And then I like to apply it with a spatula tool. So I've got a couple different options here. Let me show you. Um, these are these are larger. They're just silicone spatula tools. Here's a smaller one. And then I've got one on a handle. And these are craft, you can get these at most craft stores, have an option, a spatula tool. So I like, it depends on what, how small or large of an area I'm doing. I like the smaller one or this one with the handle is really nice to use too. So I'll probably start out with the larger and move, work over to the smaller one. So Dixie Mud is the consistency of mud, you guys. Um, and you can put it on as thick or as thin as you want. And I, these stencils are a nice um, thickness. So my, I'm going to use it and just ride my Dixie Mud right along the top of my stencil. And it's going to end up being about the thickness of my actual stencil itself. So I want to make sure I get a nice even coat. I'm going to go down the center first and then I'll come and I'll do around the edges because I'm going to have to do the around the edges a little more carefully because I've got that molding around all my edges. And the magic really happens on raised stenciling when you pull the stencil away and you get to see that raised detail. I'm going to kind of rub this at a like a 45 degree angle because I don't want to take my mud off. I'm not trying to scrape it out of the crevices. I want to make sure I get nice. It's like like batter or um, uh, frosting a cake. Okay, now I'm gonna work my way around the edges and I'm gonna hold my stencil down and I'm gonna work my mud out from the sides. Okay, so I'm just pressing my stencil down and then it's okay when I let go, it's okay if it pops away because I've got my mud in there. Nice and even right here. I'm gonna make this be more even I can tell if there's areas where <clears throat> areas where it's a little lighter than others. I'm gonna press this down right here. Let's go up to the top. Use my fingers, press this down. Cause that's, that uh, raised edge is not gonna let my stencil, unless you cut your stencil and you can, if it's an inexpensive stencil that you don't really care about, you can, you're gonna be doing the same size spot over and over again. You can cut your stencil. And then I just make sure that my stencil's pressed down. I come up here and get this. Any place I have ridges, I'm gonna get rid of those. I don't want any ridges in it. Although you can sand, and I will lightly sand this Dixie Mud once my once it's nice and dry. I'll come back tomorrow and this will be nice and dry. And, and I give it a light sanding just to get rid of any nubs or really high points, little ridges that were left in my texture because it's not gonna be perfectly flat and perfect. Okay, but this is pretty good. I like my edges. Let me get up here a little bit better. I get as close to that molding as I can. If I don't get all the way up to it, that's okay. And then I'm just gonna come back and clean up any spots that I feel like are thicker than others, thinner than others, make sure it's nice and consistent. This area right here is a little thin. I'm gonna put a little more mud on my spatula and just fill that back in. Just scraping over it time and again. Sometimes you don't pay attention and you'll pull it away. Carol says your hair looks beautiful. Oh, thanks. Glad that's what we're paying attention to tonight. All right, you guys ready to pull this off and see what we did? The reveal. So that's going to be really, really cool. I'm going to turn really the slide cool. off and see if, see if it comes across any better. Yeah, the color of the white is slightly different, so you can see the contrast in there, but that's going to be really cool texture. There we go. And then when I paint over it, it'll be the same color as the body of my piece, but just a texture in there. It's very subtle. Um, now, every few uses, you're probably going to want to wipe the Dixie Mud off of your piece because it does start to build, or off your stencil. I'm sorry, not your piece. All right. So I just added a little bit of spray adhesive just to give me a little bit of tack, and I'm going to press my stencil down again. Now, this time my stencil's got mud all over it, so it's getting my fingers pretty dirty. That's what aprons are for. And I do the same thing there where I'm just pressing it down. You 
know, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more spray adhesive. You can see already I left a little bit. I just lined my place and then up again. And now, now it's got a little bit more tack to it. I just want it to stick up there and give me a nice clean stenciling. Okay, and then same thing, I'm gonna repeat the process. Using my spatula tool and my Dixie Mud. And this is gonna, so I have inspiration for this piece, you guys. Um, what what we're doing is our, our live on Saturday is going to be inspired by old Hollywood. So I've chosen a movie, something that has sentimental value to me, and I'll explain that on Saturday. And I think this will go with the look. It'll kind of make sense as it starts coming together. So I'm going to start working my way around the edges. I'm going to come up here to the top. I know you probably can't see because my fingers are in the way. And while I hold this down, I'm going to scrape it in and then I can let it go. And if it pops up, that's okay. Cause I'm done with that area. Same thing over here. I'm going to hold it down. Trying to keep them even. And I just do one, one little scrape there. Just get it into the crevices of my stencil and then it can pop itself back away. I'll do the other side. So my look on this piece is not going to be clean and perfect. It's going to be a little more grungy, messy. I don't want to say messy. A little more grungy. You'll, you'll understand when I, when I tell you my inspiration on Saturday. You have to come back. How long do you let the mud dry before painting? Overnight overnight and then the mud can reactivate it softens when you get it wet okay because it's a water-based product so when you come back to paint it don't over rub it if i'm going to blend over the top of the mud which you know blending requires a lot of brush strokes i will seal my mud first okay so just something to keep in mind if you plan to do a lot of brushing over the top of it just seal your mud first okay up here all right, let's pull this one away. Okay, I don't like some spots on here. I don't like this top. Let me show you how I would fix it. Scrape this back away. And then I'm gonna put my stencil back on and I'll just redo this top portion. So if I feel like that was a little too messy, I just take it back off. Okay, I think this is, I'm not happy with this right here either. So it's very forgiving if you don't like a section. I'm gonna let this set up for a minute so when I put my stencil back on here, it doesn't um, sit in the wet mud again. But let's come over here and we're gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing up the sides. So I'm at the point right now where some of my mud has gotten through onto the back of my stencil. I need to wipe it away. So I'm just gonna grab a paper towel. Because then when I press that up against my piece, it's going to continue to get that mud onto my piece. So I'm just going to take a paper towel. I'm going to lay this down. I'll just use this plastic it came in. And then I can just wipe away the back of it. I think this is dead. It's not responding. So we just continue. That's right, Brittany, throwing it down, laying it down on the new floor. Uh, but I have plastic under it, so it's okay. So I'm just gonna wipe away some of that mud from the back of my stencil, and it's just going through. I just have this piece of plastic that my stencil came in. Okay, and now my back is wiped away, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Just right down that center line. This is a little bit larger of a section. Center my stencil right on there. And once I like the placement, I just go ahead and press it down. I'm going to tape this one again. Where's that piece of tape? 
So do you sand it at all? Yes, I will lightly sand this. And that just smooths it out, knocks down any nubs that are slightly higher than the rest. Um, and then it's super smooth and paintable. All right, so that's really nice. And then take my spatula tool again. So stenciling on a raised stencil on a, ray, or on a flat area is much easier. Like this side is going to be much easier than those sides that have, or those uh, insets with the moldings on them. This is a great way if you've got a really flat front piece, there's no interest in it. I like to add interest to flat fronts with, I either use blending or I'll use, um, I'll add molds myself, um, but you can use raised stenciling to add interest to really flat fronts. Mary says she just used it, uh, raised stenciling for the first time and loves it. Yes, it's so easy, huh? It's fun. It is, it's pretty non-intimidating. Just get your stencil placement right. Um, you know, like I just showed you, even if you mess it up and you don't care for a spot, you just scrape the mud right back off. I'll let that set up for a few minutes and then I'll just come back and place my stencil and just do those spots again that I took off. I don't need to redo the whole thing. I can save areas that I'm happy with, wipe away areas that I'm not. I mean, worst case scenario, this uh, Dixie Mud sands really easily too. So if, you needed to if you redo it it's very forgiving so i'm just trying to make sure i get this nice and even it's almost like i'm holding this for no reason no uh, you're probably still on and you just don't even know it youtube is weird youtube live is not i don't know we've been playing with different uh platforms YouTube's a more challenging one. I think the camera times out, even though you're still live, you just don't yeah. know it. Okay, I'm gonna get right up to the edge. Now, it, I might get some little nubs that stick out on the edge, so when this dries, I'll just have to come back and knock those down, sand those back off. But it's so fulfilling. Oh, that design is it gonna play with the camera lens. Okay, move it back a little bit. Does that help at all? I was trying to get into. You could actually see. Uh, yeah, Rashonda says they completely lost that on YouTube. She was uh, over there. I'm okay. sorry, guys. I'm sorry. We didn't do anything. We didn't push any buttons. I swear it just goes out. Well, I'm good at pushing buttons, but. Uh, I post my, my Facebooks to YouTube anyways. All right, so I'm just going to. I use um, YouTube to kind of, uh, as, a, as a video library, because it's much easier to search and stuff. Sometimes Facebook lives get overwhelming, and that way all mine are in one place. They're titled, they're searchable. I'm going rogue. I've got them sorted by topic in the playlist section. So I just use YouTube that's, as kind of a video library. Let's really give the people what they want. Okay, so you can see, since you guys are up close, you get you start getting ridges in, in where I've scraped. So I just try to make sure those are kind of even. I'm looking at in between my the spacing on my stencils because you can see if some areas are lighter than others and then I just try to even those out a little bit. I try to keep it smooth so I don't want to have a lot of scraping in my texture. You know where you've dug in too hard with your tool in a spot. Let's go ahead and pull this off. So where'd you get the stencil from? This is a Dixie Bell stencil. So Dixie Bell just released um, a new line of stencils. Right now there's three designs that came with the new release. This is the Moroccan design and they're available at the link that I put above in the post. Sorry so, Janelle, I hope this really is better. See all these nubs that are along the side right here? I'm not going to touch those right now. I mean I can come and I can wipe them with my finger. I just don't want to mess my stencil up on the front. So I just clean those off. I'll put that back in my container. Let's see if I can get, I don't want to mess my stencil up. But you can sand these really easily when it's dry too. So just being very gentle. And I just took down all these little nubs that hung over the edge. So what was that little spatula that you were using to apply? So this is, um, I do have a link for these. Um, if you guys wait, I can add it after the post. This is from Art Basics by Finnebear. Um, 
uh, Prima carries these, but I have a link for these too. And, and it's nice to have, but you can get these at most craft stores too. They have some kind of version of a spatula tool like this. So I like that. That's a really cool application. And then when I come back and paint it, I'll just have a really subtle stencil underneath my paint. Can you guys see it on camera? Oh yeah, you can. It's really dark. Where's that light? The light is what's throwing it off. All right. This one. Yeah, and then over here was where I scraped it away and I'll fix this bottom portion. I didn't like the bottom and the top. So I'll just go back and fix these, but I feel like this looks really nice. Let's see if I can find, you know, there's gonna be areas where there's small imperfections. So raised stenciling is not gonna be, this one's pretty clean. I feel like this one's pretty clean. Um, this first one was pretty clean. I'm not happy with like right here, my stencil kind of stuck into my paste in a couple spots. You know what, I may be, it may be easier to just do this whole thing over again. See, it's still pretty- I think you should. You think I should? Yeah. It's still pretty fresh, so I can just scrape it. I'll have to clean it though. Oh. I know. All right, I did that because it's probably just easier for me to do the whole thing. And it still had a couple spots that I wasn't thrilled about. So I'll just do the whole thing again. So I just added a little bit of water and that just softened the mud back up again. And it's still so fresh that I just wiped it away with a paper towel. Is it so fresh and so clean? It's so fresh and so clean. Okay. And now I'm going to clean the back of my stencil again. That was a pretty big application. So I have no doubt that I got more under the back of my stencil again. I'm just gonna take my paper towel. I don't use the same one that has a little bit of water on it. A little bit of water on my stencil just to soften it. Um, now, when I'm done with this and I've done all my panels, all my insets, and I'm done using this stencil for tonight, I need to clean this stencil. You don't want to let this stuff dry on your stencil. So make sure that once you're done with your Dixie Mud, you clean your stencil. It will be a pain if you try to clean it after it's all dry. Okay, a little bit of my spray adhesive. And let's see if this will stick because I did just add some moisture to it. Nope, not going to stick. All right, well, let's try a dry panel then. Where am I untying? Can you hand me that? My brush? Yeah, because I'm going to show that it's not really. Let's see if we can get the whole zoom in. No, maybe not. But it's a. It's not bristle by any means. It's a solid, oh no, it's a smooth. You say edge. brush, but it's a smooth edge. It's just shy of being a kitchen spatula. Just lets me scrape it nice and parallel to the lines of my stencil. So I think I'm gonna have to clean this. I've got too much moisture on my stencil. I think I'm gonna have to clean it. All right, but that gave us two good applications. I'll come back and do this one. Um, so I make sure that I'm happy with it. And then if you guys come back on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Dixieville page, we'll add paint to this. Now, speaking of Saturday, if I recall correctly seeing in the comments, someone's mom is home now. Oh, is Aaron on tonight? He was earlier. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think she's doing okay. We, uh, he's been checking in, but I don't want to be a bother either. So, um. It sounds like she's doing okay. Aaron's mom was in the hospital, so you guys send thoughts out to him, please. <laughs> it sure said you're making her so nervous with the spray adhesive going on the floor. Oh, no. I've got Dixie Mud on the floor. That's actually Apparently, she never that. saw your last one. Yeah, no. This, this floor is nothing. I've got Dixie Mud on the floor, but it's more like crumbs of Dixie Mud. It's not actual smears of it. So, it cleans up really easily with water, you guys. Dixie Mud doesn't scare me at all. No, um, it's the spray adhesive that was the oh, oh, oh. the mist of spray. Yeah, it's so good deal, Aaron. Yeah. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna let you go. I hope you'll join us on Saturday and see me put some paint on that. But that was using the new um, Dixville stencils, the damask pattern, royal damask, damask, the Moroccan pattern. 
and the houndstooth pattern are all available on the website now. Um, these are all available through your local retailers too. So you can check with them and they have the three stencil designs and the new moose designs. And then you can get your Dixie mud there at any of those too. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. You guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, we're trying to tune in. Yeah, trying to. Sorry to YouTube. I'll fix that. Thanks, um, Rashonda, for letting me know. Yeah, and we will catch you guys later. Have a good weekend.